be an absolutely fascinating battle once we get our pitches back. They definitely, Zakarin was definitely there in the mix. Quintana sat in about sixth wheel. All of the main players in the freight. And Quintana already stolen a little bit of a march. He has, just looking back through as well, seeing where the FDJ boys are. And uh, uh, Reichenbach is there, but here goes Quintana. He's had enough. He's been uh, hidden beautifully. And just, uh, uh, is that uh, Kudus that's just gone with him here as they start to get into the climb? 16 seconds to the yellow jersey. Um, from uh, uh, from these guys out front, head of the course right now, Nero Quintana. Now, this is brave by Quintana. All day he's been hiding in there, but he's been on display throughout this tour of Valencia, this Comunitat Valencia, and it's great to see, and I think that is Reichenbach who's just coming over to him, uh, just having a, a, a gaze through. Maybe it's uh, somebody from Gazprom, is it? I think it's one of possibly one, uh, first and off. Unzipped to confuse me, showing a flash of white. Uh, there we are, 25 seconds now well don't forget he needs to find 54 Quintana less than that 44 I guess um, with bonuses factored in in fact uh, no we have no bonuses on at the line today well it's already it's no, a, no, no bonuses at all yeah, exactly beg your pardon so he's got to do it all himself 54 seconds well he's got company he won't mind that but uh, um, I guess it's now or never for he who else is going to join the fun? It is one of the Gazprom boys. I uh, beg your pardon. So I think it may well be Lagutin. Was it, uh, is it Adar Zakarin? We'll have a little look in a second. Hopefully we'll get uh, some in indication. But it's definitely Kudis sat on the wheel of a flying Nara Quintana. Eases himself oh, out of the saddle as this. the gradient goes up. Great ride here by Kudis. How long can he hold on? Looks like one of the riders from uh, Direct Energy trying to get across the gap there as well. Well, yeah, maybe it's my colour blindness, but I thought somebody from Lotto Yumbo. We'll, we'll have a look in a moment. It, was a, it was, certainly was a long shot, and we both gave it one of those. 30 seconds and 36 seconds. My goodness, he's finding what he needs. Now, um, well, can he sustain it and has got, has, have, have BMC who are wearing the yellow jersey? No, no response, I'm afraid. It's not going to be Greg Van Avermaet's day. This is way down the order. 40 seconds off the back, essentially, of the group that matters. Michael Shah doing his best to guide him into a safer place, but he's going to be handing over that jersey at the end of today. Riders all over the place on a brutal climb that we've seen in the Vuelta before, and we're seeing it again today. The ticker hasn't moved, by the way, which tells you just how slowly we are taking this, although facets of all of them, is narrow Quintana. Indeed, Quintana looking very good, but I think one of the riders that joined our trio in front of or forms part of the trio is just being dropped now was one of the riders from the FC Porto Continental team. He's now dropping back. Meanwhile, Kudis turning that tiny gear behind trying to save his legs as much as he can, doing so, so well to hold on to the wheel of Nara Quintana, who looks at the moment as if he could even turn it up a little bit more if wow. he wanted to. He's going for it. He's certainly starting to drive into this incline right now, and it's one of the testy little kicks, Matt, that come very, very early on, around about the 3K marker. He's, he's what? He's pitching up to about 19% at the moment. You can see the way people are standing at the side of the road. He's still seated, and this, he's making it look as simple as it possibly could be. Well, it's absolute poetry in motion. When Nara Quintana lets it fly it really is something to behold but again I'll take my hat off to Kudis sat on his wheel turning a slightly lower gear sat really forward on the saddle this is where the pitch is up again to 17% and at the back end of this kilometer it's 19 and 21% the road relentlessly steep and these two now oh. really stealing a march ahead of the rest just what Quintana wanted it's just what this race wanted as well to see him in his pomp he's going to do the double this year he hopes uh, going for the Giro the centenary of the Giro d'Italia which we'll be able to see live here on Eurosport, of course. And then he, he's got a very short gap before he goes for the Tour de France. Would it be too much? Well, yeah, you know that last year, Oleg Tinkoff started uh, offering up a big amounts of money for riders, uh, the, the sort of, as he saw, the, the big four, to take on all three Grand Tours. Nobody was up for it, uh, apart from Contador. I think was probably forced to, <laughs> has his hand forced by um, uh, his uh, impresario owner, let's put it that way. Tinkoff's gone, and so is the idea of doing all three Grand Tours. But let's just put that to one side for a moment and imagine that if Nero Quintana goes well at the Giro, let's say he wins it, let's say he goes close at the Tour de France, will he then take on the welter at the end? It may well be. Uh, he's got the quality certainly to on a day such as this to dominate and that's precisely what he is showing now how we could is the only man who could stay with him and the gap is 50 seconds 50 seconds well at the top of this all he needed was 54 58 all of a sudden he's our virtual leader but look how composed he is it looks like he's breathing through his nose very very impressive indeed looks absolutely in control 
Kudis, 23, the 23-year-old Eritrean, sat in his slipstream on this climb. The style of these riders is quite remarkable. Sat really forward on the saddle. Some of these smaller diminutive climbers, they get the most power out of the bike when they're sat forward. Is Kudis still there? It looks like he's now been distanced. Oh. Lost a couple of lengths, fighting his bicycle. What a brave effort. Bang, there he goes. And Quintana keeps the hammer down. This is a little respite zone as uh, uh, he's guided towards the right. Only a short one, you understand. It gives him the luxury of looking back down the mountain. Now, that clock's bounced from 58 to 23 seconds in very short order. That does not mean that Greg Van Avermaet has lit it up or has, uh, has got a lift from anybody. No, it means that the clock's not to be trusted. So we'll just have to wait until we get to the line. Still says three kilometres. By my reckoning, he's got about two remaining, not three. Uh, so uh, you'll have to forgive us for being misdirected on occasion. We'll see what the gap is at the very last. He needs 54 seconds. I still think... It's his for the taking here. He certainly believes that. And look at the way he is taking on this incline. Look at the way, it, how much trouble everyone's having just moving, except for him. Those who are, don't have to take a machine up here, well, they uh, should potentially have had an easier task of staying alongside him. Can't do it. 22% now, sudden little kick grind, and then flattens out yet again. This is great to watch. It is really great to watch. He didn't take any time in going to the front. He knew he had to light it up early. Remember, this climb only four kilometers long, but brutally steep. He didn't wait. Quite often we see Nara, Nara Quintana wait for a couple of kilometers, but he Goes knew again. to take the maximum amount of time, he had to go early and really impose himself on this climb. And that is what he's doing. Uh, problem is, he's going to be getting radio reports of what the time gap is, and it can't be trusted. That's the official time gap. So um, I guess it's uh, just one kilometer to go. It's for two to go, I beg your pardon. Still says three. That was a tiny little sign uh, nailed to a tree there. Matt spotted it and went <laughs> star jumpy. Uh, but two to go. We're finally there. But is it true that it's 44 seconds? He's got to find another 10. And here's Greg Van Avermaet just uh, pushing on, is it? No, uh, I think no it's, it's uh, Lotto Yumba. They're trying to pick out the yellow jersey. Uh, but unfortunately, they've, they've gone and found Roglic out there. Uh, minute 11, it suddenly said, and they've decided to scrap the clock. Thank goodness for that. So clocks out because it's just far too confusing. Minute 11, I believe that actually was the, was the case. But nonetheless, Kitana is going for victory here. What a brave take this will be. Absolutely fantastic. We thought he'd be the favourite, but the way he's imposed him so far on this climb, mightily impressive. The brave Kudis held his wheel for about two kilometres. Then there was nothing he could do about the might from this tiny Colombian absolutely screaming as well at this climb. I think the two Lotto Enel Yumba riders we saw, I think it was Rojlik and Steven Kreisweig, who looked like they were with vault poles. Just about to take on 19, 20, and 22% at the very last. It's going to get steeper than this, albeit with a, uh, a few little flatter sections within it. A series of steps, Matt, but he is equal to all of them, and he's, uh, he's stepped up to the plate today, hasn't he? Well, it really has opened up a significant gap over the second-place rider now. We haven't got a time check back to the yellow jersey, but I think what we can say quite safely at the moment, unless something awful happens, Nara Quintana is riding his way into the yellow jersey, and oh. what a way to do it. <laughs> it's going to be a battle for the minor placings, but what a display of climbing prowess. Well, uh, a bell has rung, I think, on everybody for round one of this season, and uh, the victor uh, of it is going to be Nara Quintana, and that's got to set off alarm bells in everyone else's mind. This man is on absolutely supreme form. He got it wrong in terms of his preparation, and when he decided to enter the season last year, it seems he's hit the ground running or rolling to absolute perfection at the moment. Nobody is in this kind of condition at the moment. He is. Can he sustain it? I believe he probably can. This could be the first page of a big chapter this year. It's early Kurt. He's already won the Giro. He's already won the Vuelta. Will he win the Tour de France? Again, the rumours are he's going to try and do the double. Oh, Will he recalibrate this. a bit? This is where the road really kicks Ouch. up. There is your yellow jersey fighting the grade with every single oh, fibre he has. Goodness. This rider will not give up. Yeah, but look at the difference. You saw Quintana coming up here, and it was an ex uh, it couldn't have been. It was a polar opposite in terms of demeanour when they got to that point of uh, the course. Quintana's on a steeper incline right now. He's just coming to the end, and it looks like a, an entirely other course. There we are. He suddenly just reaches one of these little plateaus. It'll be 22% to bring him home, and he will bring it home. Uh, you're about to see the Flamme Rouge, and he is, and that will come very, very welcome, provided uh, some of the uh, erstwhile fans who don't look uh, um, uh, rather fleeting on their feet, I'm afraid, don't uh, unfortunately get in the way. Let's hope not. Nearly there. Nearly there now. It won't be long, as you said, Colin, before Nara Quintana goes under the Flamme Rouge. But meanwhile, 
I'd say well over a minute, maybe a minute and a half back is the yellow jersey. Just look at the ease of which Nara Quintana, he does look like if he wanted to, he could turn it up another gear, but on this sort of climb, what you don't want to do is put yourself into the red because there's no way of resting at all. He'll just be riding at threshold. He knows his body oh so well, but what an absolutely superb ride. He hasn't got his numbers on his back. It looks like they've blown off. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's blowing blowing everyone else away. It's amazing, isn't it? The way he's just so relaxed in adversity is something to behold. He's a very, very brave rider, and he's a quiet man when he's off the bike, but he is almost one of the ultimate competitors. He gets, um, well, he, he's kind of got the uh, the demeanor of an assassin when he's in a situation such as this. He knows what he's got to do. It's almost like he writes his own script and then acts it out perfectly, and that's what he's doing today. Well, he was delivered perfectly to the foot of the climb by his Mobistar teammates. Team Sky led for so long, and then Mobistar took it right to the bottom, and then he literally did, lit it, uh, did light it up. He had no other thoughts of the way anybody else was going to ride. This this sort of climb with these sorts of brutally steep gradients, he's 59 kilograms. He knows if he rides at the threshold with that sort of weight, clearly the condition that he's in, nobody is going to be able to hold his wheel. What a brave effort again. I'll say it again. Kudis, the 23-year-old era train from Dimension Day, did so, so well, but it looks like he's just coming into the final K now. It is. Uh, that's the, the flam yellow, uh, the flam jeune. <laughs> it's a modest little uh, <laughs> that's flam it. rouge, They had to it? move the finish. That's your modest flam rouge. Well, the camera bike just sailed through and there it is again they had to take uh, the barriers down just in case they blew down earlier on no time to anchor it um, uh, uh, beyond that I'm afraid uh, which is why he's having his photograph taken right now because this is the finale essentially of uh, what is the queen stage of this race we will go to Valencia tomorrow it will be pressure off this man after uh, heaping it upon his own shoulders today I think he wanted to test himself you know apart from testing everybody else just to see where he is and that's what you get from these early season races the answer he's received back to himself must be extraordinarily positive well he can take a, a great deal of comfort from him he's on one of these uh, flatter sections we've now he's actually reached the victory plateau he certainly has it does kick up right to the end and meanwhile a bit further down the mountain some great teamwork here by Michael Shah of BMC just behind him is your race leader but it looks like that jersey is going to be swapping uh, shoulders in just about 500 meter time there's Danny Moreno I thought he'd be in for a good ride today but his uh, his job I guess was to make sure that uh, Nara Quintana was delivered to the bottom so his job is done but uh, you know the Belgians still fighting every inch of the way to this climb remember Nara Quintana has to claw back 54 seconds on Greg Van Aert, but there is the evidence 302 now job done yes I don't think that would have been displayed if it wasn't at least that uh, yes it's uh, uh, I'm afraid for Greg Van Aert, what a brave rider he's been uh, and fabulous to watch him uh, we, we knew when he was going to go into the leaders jersey and did so duly on cue uh, when we came out of uh, Denier uh, held on to it yesterday and was, in fact rode it with a plum today but I'm afraid there's just one man who's suited to this kind of terrain and you're looking at him right now just rounding the uh, final part of the course uh, you may well be too familiar to some of you this little dip um, at the top of the mountain and uh, it's just all about celebration for this man or it will be once he crosses the line five hours in the saddle and uh, just a, a lifetime it seems of, uh, of dominance perhaps laying ahead of him there are clearly riders out there who can match Quintana but none riding here today it doesn't even, even there's nobody in it, even between that's going to threaten him at all this is where the road really kicks up the last few hundred meters are a grueling 22 percent but still he fights all the way to the line he won't give up at all. He'll keep battling every inch of the way. There's what the a lovely shot of the finish there. Yeah. A ruined building and a ruined field. Hey, it was a hell of a party last night, as you can see at the finish line uh, <laughs> barn. That's what they've got to deal with. I'm afraid uh, Greg Van Armart will get there. Uh, but it's going to be a hatful of time he takes today, or ships, I should say. This man, Quintana, just bounces up here. It'll take him a wee while, provided the uh, snow leopard doesn't get in the way or indeed the tiger um, but uh, yeah Quintana what a superb prospect for this season <laughs> it's strange to call him a prospect I'm talking about the prospect of great racing Froome will be up against him of course in uh, the Tour de France Quintana is going to take on potentially three Grand Tours definitely two we'll see how fresh he feels for uh, La Vuelta but he always functions well in Spain and of course that's exactly where we are here for this great race the Comunitat Valencia back on the calendar back in our consciousness as if it needed underscoring this is the 75 meters to go marker he's about to come through right now it'll still take him some time but 
the time will be shorter than everybody else's. It certainly will be here behind is the battle for second place. We'll get confirmation of who it is. It looks like it is one of the riders from the W from the FC Porto and with him was Kudis. They're not too far behind, but it's all about this man today, Naro Quintana. Quintana just reaching the crest right now. 25 meters to go. Well, let you, everybody be aware. Quintana is in dangerous form. Wow, the clock will roll now, and it'll be a long old count before we get some of the main players from this race. Quintana just says, how did I do? And the message comes in, you've won it. That was a piece of class, Matt Stevens. I mean, it's just to see him cross the line, composure under pressure, personified, absolutely impressive, rode ro within himself, Nothing anybody can do. This is the battle for second place. It is Whereas Kudis, the 23rd Aerotrain for Dimension Data. What a superb ride by him. Still second place. Holds on and takes it absolutely beautifully. Well, is that, that's, uh, is that Lopez just coming in? No, we're picking up Walt Poles. What a fantastic effort by Walt Poles as well. Uh, Walt Poles was way down the order, but that's a defending champion. Really all credit to him chapeau to him for, for putting in so much into today well Pols started the day what 58 seconds down uh, so he may well find himself in second place overall we'll see how everyone else factors in by the time we get to the results well done Bart Pals, absolutely outstanding ride by him and indeed by everyone today they've taken on this incline which was always going to be the uh, queen stage of the race and uh, provided some real entertainment for us. Well, there we saw David Formolo across the line. Seni, that looks like Ilno Zakharin of Katusha Alpacit. And here is Greg Van Avermaet. He's conceded a minute and a half already. The yellow jersey has gone. But he'll still battle on. He's certainly battled, battled bravely on this one. There's nothing he can do. He's conceded seconds, but he's also conceded 15, kilo, uh, 15 kilograms in weight. 59 kilograms, Nora Quintana weighs. Greg Van Avermaet, 74 kilograms. And that's what happens on these very, very steep climbs. The natural climbers really do come into their own. I didn't think it was long enough, climb. you know. I didn't think I, it was long enough for Quintana today, but uh, he, he clearly had what it took, and it was the incline that, yeah. uh, that favoured him. It's just the, just the grade. And had this been maybe a 6 or 7% uh, mm. climb, I think Greg Van Avermaet may have held on maybe to the end, maybe considered.